So most of the reviews that I see on this movie are pretty low. So Rotten Tomatoes gave it, I see on here Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 24%. Now I was watching a YouTuber named Devin and he said that he saw a source that said Rotten Tomatoes gave it 31%. So I don't know, maybe that changed within days, I don't know. But So let's just say 24 to 31%. Let's just go with that for right now. Still low, still low. Internet Movie Database gave it 50%. Common Sense Media, 40%. And among Google users, we have 48 to 67%. Now, the budget on the movie is 15 million. Right now, the box office is just over 30 million. Now, today's the 14th. The movie came out on the 5th. So, I mean, what? You're talking only nine days. Yeah, they did twice the budget, which is good for a movie like that. You know, low budget horror film that the people starring in the movie are not A or B stars, probably not even C stars. So new and upcoming actors and actresses. So I guess that is to be expected for that. But again, to be fair, it, the movie's only been out for nine days. So give it another month or two and I'm sure that box office number will change. Then again, it is a horror film. So it's probably not going to change by much, but nevertheless, it should change. In a month, I'd give it, it'll probably be Based on, I've, I've seen all these YouTube videos on here where everybody's just saying it's all bad, it's all horrible. So maybe in a month it might be at about around 60 million, I'm guessing. I could be wrong. It could be a lot less than that. It could be a lot more than that. It just depends on how many people go see it. And, you know, regardless if they liked it or not, I mean, they paid to go see the movie. So it, who knows? Only time will tell. But right now it's just at just over 30 million. Now... Again, I'm going to do the usual, Google Synopsis, and then Common Sense Media, which is one of my favorite websites when it comes to breaking down shows and movies and games and other things. So, forced into early retirement by a degenerative illness, former baseball player Ray Waller moves into a new house with his wife and two children. He hopes that the backyard swimming pool will be for fun, will be fun for the kids and provide physical therapy for himself. However, a dark secret from the home's past soon unleashes a malevolent force that drags the family into the depths of inescapable terror. The director of this movie is Bryce McGuire. The story is by him as well as Rod Blackhurst, distributed by Universal Pictures. Music by Mark Corvin. Now, let's see what some Google users on here had to say. Let's see. No spoilers here. Okay, so we're not going to do any spoilers now, but Last one, in is a rotten egg. I should have st stuck Junior live saving out. There's something bad in the water, you think? Okay, I'm not really sure where that's coming from. But delightful, slow-paced, well-paced, low-budget, well-paced, low-budget scare fair. Fun jolts, eerie, a good reason to go to a film in January. Okay, this is a five-star. When your cat tells you not to go swimming, you should listen. Okay, all right. <laughs> Cinematographer Charlie Seraf or Seraf takes us to anywhere low down suburbia Pleasantville, USA, a community of sort of picket lawns, polite, clear skin, smiling tweens. That's what. Now, here's a one star. With the script that plays out like it was written using chat GPT, we have a family looking for a fresh start by moving into a new house. By the way, I'm obsessed with ChatGPT now. I just want to put that as a side note. Um, Dad's sick, but gets better when he swims in the pool. The rest is generic horror at its best. I'm sure you can predict every scene without having a single frame of this movie. From the husband's mysterious health improvement, he's possessed, mystery solved, to the kids knowing there's something wrong, but keeping secrets, to the wife, Googling the history of the residents to locate previous occupants. It's all Amityville, but without a shirtless Ryan Reynolds on screen keeping your attention. Speaking of a lack of charisma. Now, I was watching one video where a guy was describing like, hey, there was no real emotional connection to the characters. You know what? Here's what I say. Again, now this, this might be the mindless movie watcher in me talking, but... There's a lot of movies that I've seen to where I didn't necessarily feel emotionally connected to the characters, but that doesn't mean that they weren't good movies. And then there's also other movies where 
it's like, hey, you can kind of feel some of the characters, but it still may not be your favorite movie. Not to say that it's terrible. I don't know. I just, I guess I haven't been a person, at least not yet, who has gotten to the mindset of, well, I have to uh, connect with them emotionally and then it's a good movie. Or I didn't connect with them, so that means it was bad. I, I don't know about that. that. That's, I don't know. I might be a mindless movie watcher. I could admit that. There's a lot of us who are who can't admit it, but I'll tell you, I'm probably one of those people. Uh, the cast is, so this is the, the Waller family. So you have Ray, the father. You have Eve, the mother. You have Izzy, the daughter. And then you have son, Elliot. And they're all played by... Wyatt Russell, Carrie Condon, Emily Herferl, Hoeferly, or Hoferl. I've been trying to look for how to pronounce that name. I haven't found anything, so I'm just going to go with that for right now. And then The Sun is played by Gavin Warren. And then you have a cast of many other people who I don't know who they are. I'm assuming most of you don't either, but hey, all these people did a good job, so that's not to discredit them. Now, let's get to how common sense media breaks it down. And then I'll give you my personal take. And keep in mind, this is the 2024 movie, so not to be confused with a movie called Night Swim, apparently from 2014, which I just heard of the other day. I'll check that out, and then we'll see where that goes from there. So, where's it at? Come on now. This should not take this long. This is not good. Here we go. Here we go. Sorry about that. In Night Swim, Ray Waller is a former third baseman for the Milwaukee Brewers who's been diagnosed with MS, seeking a place to settle down. Ray, his wife, Eve, their teen daughter, Izzy, and their younger son, Elliot, find a beautiful house with a swimming pool in the backyard. Since Ray's doctor has recommended water therapy, it seems too good to be true. And indeed, it's not long before Ray seems to be getting better. But the kids and Eve experience strange events in the water, including being grabbed by monstrous hands and seeing strange ghostly figures. After a disastrous pool party, it becomes clear that something is really wrong. Do you think? <laughs> Eve starts hunting for the source of the haunting, while Ray begins acting increasingly strangely. Is it any good? Again, Comics and Media only gave it 40%, so they didn't think it was that good. But they say this. And by the way, there's, out of the reviews, I see seven people commented on this, or they gave their take on it. Three parents and four kids. Again, not something that my parents would have let me watch if I was a kid, even though it's not as bad as some of the other horror films I'll talk about on here, but, you know, we'll get to that later. Its premise is so ridiculous that it might have become a silly camp classic, but this horror movie is presented totally seriously with no real scares and no awareness of its silliness. There have been movies about haunted beds and motorcycles, about possessed trucks and tomatoes. I don't know about the tomato part, the trial part. The haunted swimming pool in Night Swim is just as preposterous as any of them. And yet director, co-writer Bryce McGuire, who based the movie on his own four-minute short, crams it all into a generic horror formula, complete with dumb jump scares and an answer-seeking visit to the previous haunting victims. The movie doesn't even have any consistency in its rules. The water itself is supposedly haunted, and yet the pool is filled with gory-faced monsters as well as sweet-faced ghosts of the innocent souls it's claimed, and all of them are capable of grabbing unsuspecting swimmers. There's also a swirling black goo that seems to be responsible for something. There's competent acting by Russell and Oscar nominee Condon, and they help conjure some genuine moments of family interaction, but the more absurd things get, the less likely the less you're likely to care. By the end of this not scary trailer, Night Swim has gone right down the drain. Look, I think that it was all right. I think it was all right. I think it could have been done a little bit better. Um, as far as the jump scares in it, yeah, there were, there were a couple of them. And I would say that a good amount of the movie was predictable. Uh, I will say that the ending wasn't exactly predictable. I think it was touching and emotional. I'm not going to spoil what happened. If you're curious, go see the movie yourself. If you don't want to pay the money to go see it, that's fine. You can wait till it comes on streaming or whatever. I can see this movie going on, because this is Universal Pictures, so more than likely it's going to go on Peacock, because Universal Pictures has a contract with Peacock, so their movies will go there. You know, I think the last two Halloween movies were Universal Pictures, the same with Fast X. So and that's why they were on there. Overall, I think I can give this movie about a (sighs) 
I want to give this movie about a six. I think six is the appropriate number I can get for this movie. Do I see any sequels? I don't think so. I don't think so. Now, if there happens to be a sequel in the future, I'm open to seeing it and I would watch it and then, of course, do my regular, give you my take on what I think about it. But overall, that's Night Swim right there. So I think the actors and actresses did a good job. You know, sorry to them that most of the reviews were low, but I just say I think it could be a little bit better. So if you're curious, check out the movie yourself. And I got more movies and shows to talk about. So like and subscribe.